Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Alyssa and I just want to start off this video by saying Happy New Year. I cannot believe that we're already at 2023 because, um, well, 2022 went by really fast. Happy 2023 to all of you and I hope that you guys all have a very prosperous and successful 2023. So today I'm actually going to be doing a review of the KT Solid Floor Ferret Habitat Cage. But as you can see behind me, this is not the KT solid floor ferret habitat cage. This is actually the Ferret Nation model 182 double unit cage. For reasons that we will go over later in the video, I actually upgraded them to a much larger and in my opinion, better quality cage, but I will go over the reasoning as to why we decided to switch cages later in the video. But for now, let's just jump into the review. First, I wanna start off by talking about some of the specifications of the cage. The dimensions of the cage are 30 and a half inches in length, 18 and a half inches in width, and 49 inches in height. The materials of the cage are kind of different depending on what part of the cage you're looking at. The body of the cage, big, the wiring, is made out of wrought iron according to what I found on the KT website and also on the Petco website. The base of the cage is made out of plastic. The color of the cage Itself. The body of the cage is a white coated paint. The base of the cage and the floor pieces are gray and the climbing tubes are neon green. Now let's talk about some of the features of this cage. It has a deep base pan, which is kind of what I just call like the bottom area of the cage. So if you do have any sort of litter or any sort of pellets that you like to put on the bottom, it definitely will fit down there. It also has adjustable plastic shelves or as they call it, floors. There are climbing tubes with holes in some of the pieces of the floor that allow the ferrets to move from level to level. And there are wheels on the base of the cage. Now let's talk about comparing it to the general guideline. The guidelines that I found are actually from the VCA hospitals, so on vcahospitals.com. According to them, the minimum dimensions should be at least 24 by 24 by 18, or in centimeters, 60 by 60 by 45 centimeters. The solid floor ferret habitat falls a bit short in width. It is smaller than the guidelines by about five and a half inches. However, it does meet the minimum length and height Now let's talk about pricing. We purchased our cage at Petco, but I couldn't find our receipt to confirm the actual price that we paid for it. According to the Petco website, this cage normally retails for $197.99, but at the time that I'm recording this, it's reduced to $138.99 on sale. At the time of this recording, Amazon and Walmart are also selling this cage for $138.99 as the normal retail price. Now that we have that all out of the way, let's get into the actual review part of the review. The assembly was relatively easy. The wire body of the cage does come folded together, sort of like a flower. And so to assemble it, you do have to kind of unravel the pieces and unfold them to assemble it into a functioning cage. All of the sides of the cage are connected at what will become the top of the cage. So it makes it relatively easy and it, it's all one piece. It's just unfolded and you have to reconnect everything. It would be helpful to have a good amount of space in the area that you're assembling the cage because you do have to unfold it and with limited amount of space, it kind of might be hard to assemble it. It's easier to spread it out fully if you have a larger space, especially the wire body part of it. With the limited amount of space that we did have once we did set it up originally, it wasn't super hard to set up, but it was a little bit confusing because we couldn't fully splay it out. To make it a rectangular cage, you do have to connect it via a metal loop and hook system. Once it's assembled into its rectangular shape, there are plastic edges that you then need to attach to the bottom of the cage. The plastic edges that you then put on the bottom of the cage become the connecting piece to connect the wire body of the cage to the base part of the cage. Via the little plastic edging, the wire body of the cage is connected to the base with a little latch system on opposite ends of the cage. The wheels come already attached to the pan, so it was kind of nice and it eliminated a step of having to put wheels on the base pan. The floor shelves are connected to 
the cage by sliding them in through the middle door, which was the largest door, and then you snap them into place by hooking them onto one of the wires and you kind of push it and it snaps into place. These floor shelves are important to the structural integrity of the cage and they're designed to be that way. After the shelves are installed securely, the last step is to install the climbing tubes to allow your ferrets to move from level to level. It's pretty easy to install the climbing tubes. You just push it and it snaps in. Then assembly is done. So now let's move on to some pros. The first pro is that this was readily available in Petco. So it was convenient for us when we brought our ferrets home. This cage was not available in any of the Petco's that we saw and we couldn't find any in the area. So we needed somewhere to put them faster. The next pro is that the three doors allow for easy access to every level. There is a flip top door on the very top of the cage that allows you to reach your pet by grabbing in through the very top if for whatever reason you cannot grab your pet through the side top door. The wire body of the cage detaches from the base pan of the cage which can make it a little bit easier to clean. However, we'll go more into that later. The floor shelves do not have to be placed in a specific orientation. So if for whatever reason you don't like the suggested setup, you are free to orient the floor shelves however you like. Also keep in mind that they are designed in the suggested manner to really reinforce the structural integrity. So if you don't use it in the suggested manner, you might need to reinforce some other way to make it stronger. You can also choose what side of the cage or what orientation you would like the climbing tubes to be in. If you'd like them all to be facing the front, you can do so, or you can alternate where they're on opposite sides. I do recommend alternating them on opposite sides, so that way your ferret doesn't fall from the top level all the way to the bottom level without another floor in between. The floor shelves, if placed next to each other, like in the suggested photo on the box of the cage, eliminate fall risk from platform to platform. However, your ferrets can still fall through the holes of the climbing tubes. Another pro is that it's good as a starter cage. We temporarily housed all three of them in that cage. Unfortunately, it took us a little bit longer than we had hoped to actually receive our cage. And so we ended up using the KT Solid Floor Ferret Habitat for a lot longer than we had anticipated. And the last pro is that the climbing tubes are easy to replace for whatever reason. KT actually sells these separately as separate accessories aside from the cage. They sell them in a variety of different colors as well so you don't have to keep the neon green if that's not your vibe the climbing tubes as they're sold by KT separately are actually called the KT my first home giant tube street I'll have them pictured here and I'll try and link them below so it's very easy to replace them if for whatever reason you don't like the green or they become damaged So now let's move on to the cons. The description of this cage says it's easy to clean. However, I found the opposite to be true. I thought it was pretty hard to clean. I couldn't find a litter pan that spanned across the bottom of the base pan. So we ended up using a corner litter box and hoped for the best. The plastic parts of the cage, the base pan, the floor shelves and the climbing tubes, unfortunately, very easily retained smell. So after a while of use, they did start to stink and no matter what we did to clean it, it did retain smell. The doors on the top and bottom levels of the cage were small. So then in turn, the openings were small. The small openings made it really hard to clean the cage efficiently. And it was really awkward to clean as well because it wasn't easy to remove the shelves. In order to deep clean the floor shelves, I had to remove all of the shelves, including the top level, through the middle of the cage. So it was kind of a tedious process to do a deep clean every single week. When taking off the body of the cage to then clean the base part of the cage where they use the bathroom, it was very awkward to remove because of all the cage accessories. It removes from a latch system and when you pull it up, the levels that are there stay there. They're attached to the wire body of the cage. It would be heavy in some parts that were closer to the back where their beds were, and it would be really light in the area towards us. And so it was very awkward to remove it from the base pan to then clean. That being said, it honestly wasn't that bad. It was just a little bit annoying more than anything, but it is something to definitely keep in mind. The climbing tubes are not a very good way for the ferrets to get from floor to floor. When we first got the cage, they were afraid to go from floor to floor. And as I've read reviews on the Petco website, it seems that that is the case with a lot of ferrets who get this cage. It took our ferrets a couple of days to finally start moving from floor to floor, but they were going to a lower level 
once they got their front paws and head down, their butt and back legs just kind of flopped behind them. It also just didn't seem very comfortable for them and it concerned me that their backs might have an issue later if we continued to use it. They had to bend kind of weirdly to get underneath it to then get to a top level. Our ferrets figured out ways to unlock the cage by excessively cage raging even when the doors were in the fully locked position. So we ended up having a couple scares when they got out. We ended up zip tying the doors when we knew we would be out for longer periods of time to kind of minimize the risk of them escaping. Our ferrets cage raged a lot with this cage, even though they got plenty of out time. Because the base pan was tall, it did interfere with how I was able to place the food and water and it would cause them to end up climbing on their food and water bowls to eat. Hey everyone, editing Alyssa here. Just wanted to stop and put in something that I actually forgot. Another con that I actually found is that it was hard for our ferrets to get in and out of the cage by themselves. Because of the height of the base pan and and the height of the door, it was kind of hard for our ferrets to get in and out by themselves. Because of that, we had to lift them in and out all the time. And sometimes they would wanna get in and out by themselves while they were having free time and it would cause their feet to get stuck. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that if you do purchase this cage, make sure to get some sort of ramp or cover for that bottom door so their feet don't get stuck. Otherwise you have to lift them in and out. Something to keep in mind. We bought this cage as a placeholder until our preferred cage came. We never intended this to be their cage for longer than a month or two. We have three ferrets, so it was too small for the three of them. If you only have one ferret, I think that this cage actually is a bit spacious for just one, so it might be more suited for only one ferret. Now I'm gonna move on to ratings. Ratings for each aspect are rated on a scale of one to 10, with one being undesirable, five being manageable, and 10 being Great. So in terms of quality, I give this cage a seven out of 10. The wire body of the cage, the floor shelves, and the base pan are made pretty well. The wire body of the cage is coated in white paint or some sort of metal protectant, which kind of easily chips over time, especially near the locking parts of the doors. They're also a tad flimsy and bends a little easier than a more solid metal. Also, the climbing tubes did scare my ferret and it took a long time for them to get used to, although they started using them after a couple days, which I found to be a detriment to the quality of the cage. Moving on to ease of setup ratings, I rate it a seven out of 10. It wasn't very hard to set up. The cage is a little awkward and placing the wire body onto the base pan might take a little bit of adjusting and readjusting and readjusting again to get it into the right place to then attach via the latch system. For ease of cleaning, I rate this cage a five out of 10. It was harder to clean than we thought it would be. We had a corner litter pan, bad idea, I know. And the only way to lift the litter pan in and out of the cage was to physically remove the whole top of the wire body of the cage from the base pan, reach in and grab it. So it was a bit inconvenient to change it out every day. Because the bottom door was so small, any litter pan that did fit into that door was far too small for our ferrets to use. As I mentioned earlier, the plastic parts itself did hold on to some smells, even after we would clean it, and that affected its ease of cleaning rating. For everyday use, I rate this cage six out of 10. One of our ferrets, Bandit, figured out that if she cage raged for long enough and hard enough, that the doors would eventually come unlocked. The doors also varied in looseness around the locking mechanism part of the door. So the middle door for some reason was easier to open than the other two doors on the bottom and the top. The middle door ended up being Bandit's preferred escape location because the middle door was a little bit looser than the top and bottom. So it was easier for her to cage rage and get out. Eventually we learned that we had to zip tie the doors when we were leaving for longer periods of time because once Bandit would cage rage, she would open it and all three of them would escape. Keeping in mind the somewhat difficult way of maintaining the cleanliness of the cage, it brings the everyday rating down just a bit. My overall rating for this cage is a six and a quarter, so 6.25 out of 10. This is the average of all the ratings that I had mentioned earlier. It's not a bad cage, and that's not what I'm trying to get across. I would recommend this cage as more of a temporary cage than a permanent cage, especially if you are keeping more than one ferret. This cage is actually a decent cage. However, I would not and do not recommend this as a permanent cage for your ferrets. It's good to keep in mind that cages like these can make your ferrets go cage rage crazy. Although out of all of the KT branded ferret cages, 
I do believe that this is the best option. Other cages that KT offers specifically for ferrets do have ramps and even slides for your ferrets to transcend from level to level. However, they are made out of a slick plastic, so your ferret might slip. From what I've seen too, because the levels are not super spaced out, they don't end up using them anyway, so it's rather pointless to purchase if your ferret won't use the ramps or slides included with the cage. Might as well just get a cage that doesn't have them and it gives you a little more room. So that has been my review of the KT Solid Floor Ferret Habitat. Thank you so much for watching. We did use this cage for a fairly decent amount of time, so feel free to drop any questions you may have and I will try my best to answer them. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.